Welcome everyone, my name is Jeff Smith. I'm a product manager here at Oracle and I'm responsible for tools such as Oracle SQL Developer. Uh, today I want to do a shortened, quicker version of a talk I did at Code One this fall in San Francisco. It's a talk I've been doing for a very long time, SQL Developer Tips and Tricks, but I gave it a data specific twist. So all of these tips and tricks are about making it easier to work with and understand the data that you are interacting with in your Oracle database. This is a uh, kind of new mantra we have going on at Oracle and I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Obviously uh, if you're using a tool uh, like SQL Developer and using the SQL language, you're working with data um, each and every day, and you know hopefully tools can help you do these things. You know, see the data in new ways and discover business insights and, and help you be more successful in your job or the task at hand. And that's really what's behind every tip and trick that I show our end users. So I hope you enjoy this. Sit back, and I'm going to try to do this in 20 minutes. Let's see how close I can get to that. All right, so let's get into the tips and tricks. I'm going to do these rapid fire. I won't live demo everything, but for the more interesting ones, or the ones that are very specific um, or quirky in terms of like exactly where you right click, I'll, I'll try to step you through that. So the thing that I see people do the most um, that might drive me um, the most crazy is that's actually a very common um, thing. You're writing a query or a report, you've got data in a grid, and you want to get that data in that grid out and into someplace else in perhaps a different format, either to the clipboard or to a file or even just back to the screen. And what you'll see people do, um, and this isn't bad, it, it's just I, I know there's faster ways to get you where you want to go. They'll right click in that grid, go through a dialogue, and seven clicks later they'll end up with what they want. In this case they've got a comma delimited uh, format of the query results in the worksheet. So they've either said send that to the worksheet or they've said send it to the clipboard and they've pasted it in. Now there's a faster way for you to get what you want here and so pay attention to this trick. I think you're going to like it a lot. So instead you can build the format of the output that you want directly in to your query and the trick is if you add a comment and that comment is only the format and it matches exactly how it's listed in the grid when you do the export um, when you run this via F5 or execute as a script the results come back exactly um, in that format so I will live demo this So let's say I want um, some data back in the form of um, XML. Now if I run this with Control Enter or F9, it comes back in this grid and it's not doing anything. But if I run this with this button here, we automatically put this through our XML formatter. So the things that you can put inside this hint are determined by what you see in this dialog. So anything that's not a binary file format here you can use. So loader, which would be SQL loader, that works, but PDF, which is you know like an Adobe PDF, that's not valid. Um, here's a new one, JSON formatted. Let's see what that does. So we get a JSON formatted file. So Exxon, sorry, XML versus JSON. Have at it. Use the one that you want to do. Uh, now, if you don't want to use these comments, and uh, you would rather just set this um, specifically for your session, you can also say set 
SQL format, and I can say something like um, ANSI console. So this is a special one that says format the output specifically to fit to screen. So we have the columns sized properly so we don't have that nasty um, scrolling off the screen. Okay, so I think you'll like that trick a lot. Um, that's the reason I showed that one first. If nothing else you get from this video, I hope you find that useful. Right, so I didn't show this, but if you want to use the SQL plus commands like spool, uh, you could quickly write these um, query results out to files onto your operating system. There's a new command that we've added called DDL that allows you to generate the DDL, for example, for a table. So if you said something like spool um, locations.sql, and then you said DDL um, locations, and then select star from locations, you could have in one file everything you need to create this table, you know, structure and data someplace else. It doesn't get much easier than that. Here's an example of what this looks like when you're using it inside of SQL CL, which is the command line version of SQL Developer, and when we're using the SQL sort, the SQL format of HTML. So you get just a very basic HTML cell grid with a little bit of JavaScript in here that allows for um, filtering of the data. If you are going to use um, the mouse to do the right click to do the exports, um, I do recommend um, that you go into preferences first and set up all of the um, defaults. So if you're always doing um, an export um, to the format of insert statements and you always want it to go to the clipboard, you only have to set that once and then every time you go in to do the export it's going to remember that. And you can actually set defaults for each of the different file formats. So if you want JSON formatted to always go to a file, but you always want XML to go to clipboard, um, you can set the defaults for each of those. So every time you go to right click, you're not always changing things. Okay, so um, speaking of data, and maybe you don't need to write a query, you can go directly into a table or view and you want to browse it. Um, one of the features we have is um, a space where you can put in um, predicates. So instead of saying, you know, select star from all objects, I might want to say uh, where object type equals something. Um, now, these are pretty easy to type column names, but not all of us are blessed with such <laughs> easy to understand and type data models. But if you want to, while you're in this drop down, if you hit control space bar, which is the same keyboard shortcut you see in a SQL worksheet for help with your query, will bring you up a list of um, columns and you can um, keyboard through this and quickly you know set up your filters. Here's a more interesting trick. Um, so here's an example of using that query predicate filter. Um, I'm going to do a split grid. So I want to see two different ranges of data in the same screen. So at the top bottom, sorry, at the top right and the bottom right of these pages, you see this little um, widget that if I pull and drag on, it splits the screen. So I'm drag that, pull it down. Now I've got two grids and I can do anything I want. Um, let me just do this very quickly for you in super slow-mo so you can see what I mean. So I can grab this, pull it down. I've got a grid up here and a grid up here. I can also grab this, pull that over. I've got a grid, grid, grid. So it's the same data, but I can have different um, sorts, different column um, orders, um, whatever I want down here. And I don't even have to have um, grid, grid, grid. I could have grid up here, 
um, here I could have the column definition and here I could have the statistics and anytime I want I can come up here and say unsplit and bring me back to that single page so I use that trick all day every day it's very nice um, now instead of splitting um, a viewer on a table, you might want to have different tables open at the same time. So I'll see people opening up a second, third, even fourth copy of SQL Developer just so they can have on one screen um, more than one object open at once. And that's totally not necessary. Um, it's very easy to do. Um, here I'll live demo it very quickly. But the main thing to remember is that you need to pin a table first before you try to open the second table. Um, by default, the tool doesn't want to have more than one table open at a time because of uh, resource requirements that might come into play. But if you're okay to pay that tax, here's this pin button. I'm going to click on it, and I'm going to open a different table. So now I've got this table and, and then this table, and then you've got two different things you can do. I can grab this with my mouse and find a place to dock it in the UI. So now I've got customers and I've got employees. Let's put it back up here. Um, the other thing I can do is right click and say new document tab group. So I've got employees over here, customers here. And here in this screenshot I've just basically done that four different times or dragged it to three different spaces. You could go as far here as you have room on your monitor. My monitor is not quite that big but four is pretty reasonable. And you can do this with more than just tables. You could do it with any database object that has a viewer for it in SQL Developer. So RESTful services, views, synonyms, table spaces, users, packages. But, you know, tables and browsing data is probably the most common scenario. Um, I call this tips and tricks. Let's show a couple tricks. And again, I will have links to these code samples. Um, in the description of the video. I'm not going to live demo this, but I'll just give you a, a quick feel for how this works. Um, you know, you might want to have a, a report that includes links to objects in the database. So here's for an example, uh, a report that shows me um, the size of objects in a schema in terms of how much space they're consuming. And then when I want to go look at one of those things, uh, I can click into them. So these look like blue hyperlinks, and they actually are. But instead of opening up something in my internet browser, it's going to open up in the Object Explorer. So using this special code here where I'm supplying to SQL Developer the schema owner, the object type, and the object name, and here's the, the real magic code that activates the hyperlink. As I click on one of these things, it'll go open these objects because we know everything we need to know. We know who owns it, what kind of object it is, and what its name is. And so when you're building your own reports, um, that's a really nice trick to have. It just saves you from having to click around the, um, the database connection tree. Similar thing here, um, the syntax, you can guess what this does. So I'm saying, hey, um, I've got a gauge and I'm providing different um, delineation points to show where these collars are going to change. But I basically have created um, um, a gauge here that just you know makes it easier for me to see visually what I'm looking at. So these numbers kind of all run together in my head, um, but based on these thresholds that I've set, I can know immediately if this person's making enough or too much money. So this one's pretty intuitive, but if you didn't know you could do it, you probably wouldn't have figured it out. Um, so I'm copying rows here in a grid, but I could have easily copied this out of a grid in Excel, as long as the data is delimited. Um, I can um, select an equal range of values and paste in um, what's from the clipboard. So it's a really easy way to insert a bunch of rows into a table all at once. So I'm in a table viewer here. I'm clicking the plus button. I'm selecting... Um, 
that area and I'm pasting the, that data in and all I have to do is hit the commit button and uh, I've quickly inserted what seven or eight nine new rows uh, pay attention here because I get this question a lot um, people like to be able to copy and paste data out of grids um, and they figured out how to get the data but they haven't been able to figure out how to get the column headers and the trick here is simply instead of control um, C or command C it's control or command shift C and what that does is it grabs the data and the column headers so just so you don't think I'm messing with you control shift C I've got the column headers and the data from that grid right there. Here's a nice trick. Um, you're working on a select statement. You're going to have a where in list. And you can't easily use a SQL statement to provide those values. So you can have up to, like, what, a thousand um, specific um, inputs here for this in list. Um, so maybe the easiest way to get those is by browsing a table. I can simply select this list of values here and drag and drop it onto um, this editor and we'll automatically put in a common delimited list of values. Um, and if these are strings, we'll automatically quote those for you. So that can save you quite a bit of typing. Let's talk a little bit about um, getting help with writing your queries and seeing just exactly what your queries are doing. So this is called the insight feature. Um, this is what you'll see generally as you're typing. If you stop for a second or two, sometimes you'll get these little pop-ups. Um, so here's an example of where we're pulling example queries out of the online Oracle docs. For example, if you need help with a case statement, if I click on that case when E salary greater than 200 text, um, that's actually going to pull the example query out of the Oracle docs that's being used to demonstrate the case statement. Uh, and that's what goes into the worksheet. Now, if I click on the actual picture of the book next to that text, it'll open up the online Oracle docs reference page for the case statement itself so I can learn more about the case statement. So a lot of people know about the help getting a column list or a list of tables. Uh, I think this is a little bit less um, um, well understood, you know, the, the ability for us to help you with the syntax of the code you're working on. And you activate this um, manually using control space bar, um, or you can wait for the automatic helper to pop up. So the preferences will say we won't automatically do these pop-ups if there's more than, say, 10 um, or so uh, suggestions to make, because we just don't find them super useful if there's like 10 million objects for you to choose from. Uh, if you still want the help, you can hit Control Space Bar, and that'll force up the list. So I obviously have more than 10 things from here to choose from. Um, select star from E, it's showing me the things in my schema that start with the letter E, and then it's going across other schemas that I have access to that start with the letter E. So like I said, this list isn't super helpful to me. Um, the more I type here, the shorter that list is going to be, and the more useful it will be. And also, when the list is 10 items or fewer, then if I have the automatic insight on, I don't have to hit control space bar. They'll just show up. Um, this is the preference where I'm talking about with the automatic um, feature on, these checked on, after I wait 0.4 seconds, if I have 10 or fewer suggestions, I'll see this pop up automatically, otherwise I can hit control space bar to force this up. Um, select star from, we all love writing those queries even though we probably shouldn't and we know better. Um, if you want, you can have SQL Developer help you fix this. Um, so if I mouse over the star, we'll show you the list of columns. Um, that that resolves to. And if I actually click on this text, we'll replace the star with these um, items. You can undo that if you want to go back to the star. So this is also just useful for, like, say you've got a cursor 
in some PL SQL and someone's written a select star from and you don't know what the columns are going to be, uh, you can just use this little peek over the asterisk figure to see, oh, okay, when this runs, these are, these are the columns that are going to be used to, I don't know, for example, populate my ref cursor. I don't want to get into any um, philosophical debates or discussions here, but some people absolutely hate the style of um, join syntax when you're um, working with your tables. Uh, this is the way we've generally written it in Oracle, where we have a where um, table.column equals table.column, and it's defined in the where clause. Um, and the insight feature will help you write these when you have existing foreign key constraints. So here I've got three different key constraints I can key in on. Um, if you hate this style, um, you can select the text, right click, go to refactoring, and say toggle ANSI Oracle joins. So we'll rewrite the statement for you to be um, ANSI style join. And if you are an old school user and you really don't like this format, you can do the same thing. So it'll go in both directions. So let me just show you an example of this. So here I've got the ANSI style join syntax. And if I don't like that, I can right click and say refactoring toggle Oracle ANSI joins. And you can see that's been moved down to the where clause. You can always undo to undo that. So I'm not going to pick a winner, but just so you know, the tool can help you either which way you like. Um, I'm, I type fast, although not I won't always type uh, accurately. Um, before I go to run something, uh, or if you're bringing in some code and you're running it as a user that might not have the privileges necessary, uh, we'll try to show that to you. So the um, parser will go through there and say, hey, I don't actually see something called employees <laughs> in your schema. Um, so if you see these little squiggle marks, if you mouse over that, that's when we'll try to explain to you the advice um, that we're providing. So back to where we were talking about the ANSI and um, SQL style, Oracle style joins. Um, when you go click on uh, an object such as a table or a view, there's a model page. And this will show you the referential integrity defined in the database via foreign key constraints. Um, now, unfortunately, a lot of you are used to seeing um, your schemas built this way, where there is no referential integrity built into the database itself. Um, our modeling tools can help you with this. If you need help understanding your data, if you have a driving primary key value in other tables and that column name is propagated across like this, in our modeler you can say discover foreign keys and using that logic we'll say okay this is probably a, a, a relationship for you and show that to you. Let's end on a high, or I guess maybe low note, <laughs> working with Excel. We're all doing that, so let me show you a couple tricks. I get this question fairly frequently. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why you'd want to have such large Excel files all the time when that data is better off in your table, but uh, whatever. When you need to get a bunch of data out of your database and into Excel, if you use the database export feature, So if I say tools, database export, and I click Excel here, let's not get the DDL, let's just get the data. And let's just pick a couple of specific tables. Let's do regions. Let's do locations, and let's do employees. And if we come back here, I say save as a single Excel file and finish, you can see that it's created 
um, this file for me, how many rows it's grabbed. If I look at my Excel file, I've got one workbook per table. Um, so whether or not I get one um, file per table or one workbook per table, it's all based on whether I have single file here or separate files checked. If I have separate files checked, I'll point to a directory instead of a file and we'll give you one file per object. And in this case, it doesn't have to be Excel. And once you go multiple files, it's whatever format you want. Uh, if you want to instead copy data to another database instead of out to a flat file, um, then it's really nice. You can just drag and drop tables from one connection into a different connection. So I've got multiple connections here. Drag these, or select these, drag them up to this cloud connection, and we'll automatically move the DDL um, and the data of those objects up, and we'll honor referential integrity constraints and indexes and all that good stuff for you as well. So it's a nice thing to do when you've got uh, test or development instances with you know a reasonable amount of data. If you're going to be talking about terabytes worth of data, then that's probably when you want to go back to offloading stuff to CSV and using things like external tables or maybe even using data pump to move stuff around. Uh, if you are going to be moving large amounts of data, um, use that export wizard again. Um, use the loader format, which is uh, code for SQL loader. And then when you're ready to move data around seriously, um, so this is fast for my laptop, it might not be fast for a serious machine, but in this case I was able to uh, load a lot of data at, uh, in a short amount of time. Um, external tables are even faster. And SQL Developer on the export wizards and on the import wizards will help you set up both SQL loader and external table um, staging scenarios um, when you're trying to get data out in CSV and trying to get it back into a database from CSV. Once you've got data in your database and you want to start getting it back out using queries, you might run into the scenario here and there where your queries aren't as fast as they could be. How can we help you with that? Well, when you're looking at your query and you want to get to the plan behind that, if you use the execution plan or the explain plan button, instead of using the, the button part, if you click on this drop down, we can generate for you the DBMS X plan reports. So we reverse engineer the SQL ID for the query text and make it easy for you to get out your execution plan reports the way you like. Once you're looking at plans, if you want to compare those side by side, we make that pretty easy. Um, you just pen a plan and then right click and say compare and we can do those side by side. And if you've got trace files down on your machine, we have a trace file um, viewer. So file open point to the trace file. We make it really easy for you to see um, what queries are ran during your trace session and the plans and wait events for each of those. All right, I know that was a lot of things thrown at you in a short amount of time, and I think I went over the 20 minutes just a little bit. I apologize. If you want deep dive overviews of all the things that I've went over today, then just um, meander down below the video here in the YouTube page, and you'll see in the description links to all of the different tricks in long form. Uh, thanks, everyone, for your time. I will admit this was more fun doing this at uh, Oracle Code 1 with a, a full room and some people laughing at my bad jokes, um, but I hope this found value with you. If you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment, and don't forget to subscribe if you want updates as I post new videos. Uh, thanks everyone, and happy SQL Deving out there.